everyone, Jonathan Pierre at the Beer and TV Ramble here in New Jersey, looking at Valentine Ale. Woohoo! 4.5% ABV by volume. Um, this is one of the signature beers that this my adopted state is known for. I found this in Newark. Uh, 72 score by Beer Advocate and 79 by The Bros, which means it's okay. I don't have my trusted beer glass since I'm on the road, so I'm having to use a paper cup. I meant plastic glass. Anyhow, it's American Blonde Ale. Uh, a little history about this beer here. Uh, P. Valentine's Sons Brewery, of course, was founded in 1840 here in Newark, New Jersey. Um, of course, at that time, it was one of the oldest brands of beer in the United States. And the brewery was the third largest brewery in the U.S., um, right now, the beer, of course, is all owned by the Pabst Brewery, uh, which took, took over. Uh, many look at this as a malt liquor. Um, I don't. I, I think it's, uh, you know, a, a good standard lager, but a blonde ale. It's an ale, excuse me. Um, but uh, but it is a, a very deep history here. Um, I, you've probably seen it on a lot of the p uh, posts on Facebook. Um, um support regular ass beer or support um posts or, or support bad beer all these different groups that some of them I'm, I'm i'm involved in but um it's uh it's a pretty decent um it's um you know they do show a lot of pictures of, of valentine ale and whatnot and you know, i don't really think much of it i just kind of laugh it off when i see those kind of commercials but you know valentine ale really has a place it was my first six pack I bought when I became a legal legal drinking age in 1997, and it was uh, since back of this in cans, in 12 ounce cans. So, on to the taste. Some raw malts you can smell. A lot of yeast oil in this. Really sent it. Get that scent already. Taste. I know it's, it's, it seems crappy, cheesy to do it, but um, but uh, for let me just savor and this uh, this beer and sip a little bit here, a little bit there, while while I have this. Um, Well, I'm telling the story of uh, Paps. I'm telling the story of uh, Valentine. Um, of course, the brewery, you know, um, they, uh, the brewery was uh, taken over um, within the going to the 70s. Again, it was like I said, the preeminent beer brand. It, it sponsored a lot of things, Yankees baseball, uh, a lot of different sporting events, um, uh, sports teams, um, uh it was it was sort of the it was the beer in and at that time here in, in here in the United States. Um, in 1972, they closed their brewery. And um, in in in, in 72, um, at that time it became the sixth largest brewery behind it. Of course, the big one, Anheuser Busch. Uh, Peter Ballantyne, of course, uh, the the founder. If you look at the ownership over the years. Then you had the uh, Freelerheisen era, George Freelerheisen. A lot of these names, a lot is also names of some of these streets here in, in the city of Newark. Um, his son and Frederick had uh, decided to, um, and, um, to uh, he was the son of uh, George uh, Freelerheisen, was the son of Frederick and Matilda uh, Griswold. And uh, he uh, took over the brewery, and um, and of course over the years, you know, it, it like I said, the, the the brewery stayed going through everything went through prohibition. Um, by the sixties, the, uh, the beer company went to started going down. Um, they sold it to uh, Falstaff Brewery in nineteen seventy two, and and they continued to, to brew their beer, but um, but within. And uh, within 1985, they sold it to Paps, 
And I think at that time, the brewery had also shut down. As you can see, there's a, an old building where the old brewery used to be right on South Orange Avenue of of that beer. And it just uh, it had the PAP sign. And, of course, that's where they had brewed most of their, their products. But by then, things change, competition, um, economics, things like that. City was getting was changing as well. <clears throat> Everything kind of went downhill. But the beer continued to be brewed and has continued to kept its recipe as as it has over the years, so. Um, but also one of the most popular ones is now, not that, but not only this has continued to be good, but also their IPA has grown into an enormous popularity, which came out last year in 2014, uh, which is uh, was relaunched, it was relaunched, I should say, because they had it before, but it was relaunched again, and, uh, and uh, so. So it was uh, so Paps has always tried to keep being involved and in keeping a lot of these brews they've had the beers or companies they've, they've acquired have you know maintained the traditional recipe and not really kind of taken a backseat approach. Yes, maybe some streamlining some costs, which we all know happens in any brewery, but at least they keep, you know, things the same as is you make sure the same people are there the same work crew um the same brew my um, brew master brew chief or brew chef i should say is still running producing some of these uh products so um i like this like i said i've um i had bought this back in um last year and um well, not last year i was during during the summer i was up here my high school reunion and um i was going to do a review of it but unfortunately i never got a chance to i went ahead and pop popped it open and had it one afternoon and uh, and uh I, I i just thought it was the best thing in the world still do um it was a 25 ounce can that i had bought um in downtown newark and i also bought it at the same place in downtown newark so i said um, while i'm here i'll try to do a review of it so very crisp, very refreshing. It's a nice little finish to it. Um, it's really a, a decent, decent beer. Um, uh, what else to say about Valentine that I've always liked? You know, this is is a retro. It's a classic. It's a retro, you know, beer with a lot of history that. Um, are people are really, really rediscovering now, um, really are starting to, you know, who may have had, may have never had it before. I've heard about it, you know, I've had it and, you know, and of course where I live at, I can't get it down there. So, uh, I make an attempt to get it, but, you know, bring some down with me, but, you know, it's one of those beers that the more you like, you get re reacquainted with these beers again, sort of have an appreciation for it. Like, with me, it's been with Budweiser. I'm starting to have an appreciation for Budweiser and what it does. Uh, same with Milwaukee, uh, um, um, Milwaukee's Best, um, Mickey's, even some of the malt liquors I've tried. I'm starting to have a grown a good appreciation for them. Beers that I probably have swore off and said I wouldn't try again. Many have gone into the light light beer world at that time, <clears throat> but really starting to have a, a great embrace for this um you compare this with any fish um any italian food middle eastern food will go great with this beer i um just had uh some red snapper uh just a while ago and um and um it did and and this is going well with this right now finishing off my little after dinner beer The taste is crisp, very clean. So, I really like it. Um, I'm going to give this, Valentine's always had a place for me. I'm giving this a solid, solid nine and a half uh, for Valentine's Ale. Um, great beer. And I really like them. Definitely next is going to be trying their IPA. So, um, if you had this, tell me what you think about it. Um, give your statement, your comments, leave it on the bottom. Tell me what you think. Uh, John is here at the Beer and TV Ramble, uh, reviewing Valentine Elton. Keep watching, and as always, cheers and happy holidays, everybody.